That's our YouTube Live on Wednesday afternoon, and we'll give people a few minutes to uh, come on in, and we'll then get started with our little funky landscape today. So have we got people uh, joining us today? Uh, we do. We've got Avni, uh, Avni here from New York. Okay, great. Hi, Avni. Nice to have you with us. Let us know where you're watching from today, guys. Sure. So uh, today we are uh, going to be using Apple Barrel Multi-Surface Paint. And this is a great assortment that uh, Plaid has put together. It's Promo ABMS1, and you can find this on Amazon.com. So usually I just sit down and start painting, and whatever happens, happens. Uh, for today's lesson, I sat down with this assortment of beautiful colors and came up with this little landscape. So we will be using some colors that you may not have seen me use before, but I think we're going to end up with a really, really fun little landscape. So as usual, when you take an online class with me, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. And that same thing's gonna hold true for our little landscape today. So I want you to either paint along with me or watch the replay once this has been posted in the Plaid Crafts YouTube channel. So we are going to start today with a five by seven canvas and I have attached it to a piece of cardboard. So this is going to be your first pro tip of the day. It's much easier to paint on something when you're not trying to hold it and get paint all over you and it's just better to give yourself a little handheld easel uh, when we are going to start painting. All right, so I'm going to start with some primary blue just put a big puddle of that out on my palette. I'm going to put out some Summer Sky on my palette. And I'm also going to put out a little bit of Wisteria on my palette. Along with white. All right, so I'm going to be using a three quarter inch flat brush and we are going to get right into painting. So I'm going to pick up some of my primary blue along with some summer sky. Just brush mix these colors together. And on the left side of my canvas, we're going to apply this with long, light, sweeping strokes. You can leave a little bit at the bottom unpainted if you want to. So we're just going to stroke this on big, sweeping strokes. And as I move across the canvas, I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the summer sky lightening my canvas as I move from left to right. And I keep picking up plenty of paint so that there's enough paint on my canvas so that it's very easy to blend and soften the colors. All right, now as I get over here to the right, I'm going to pick up some Wisteria and that's how we get this really beautiful kind of purpley mauve color into our sky. So again, soften this with long sweeping strokes. I would like to call your attention to the fact that uh, some people will buy a super inexpensive canvas to paint on. And if you do, and you find your canvas is a little bit rough, go ahead and take some sandpaper and give it a quick sanding uh, so that you make your canvas surface a little bit smoother. Uh, that'll make things a little bit easier on you as you paint. All right, so Stephen is moderating for me today. So do we have any questions yet, Stephen? No questions yet. Um, okay. Sarah says that she loves that tip that you just gave a minute ago. And okay. We've got some people uh, watching uh, from Oakville, Ontario, and Sarah herself from Chicago. Okay. Texas as well, too. So I'm stroking on a bit more of the wisteria because I really like that kind of purple into the uh, sky. And I'm just sweeping that on long strokes this time from right to left. All right, I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks. So I'm going to reach over and get my hair dryer. And Andy, there, I do have a question for you. Okay. Um, do you use a base to help blend or work straight onto the canvas? I'm just working straight on the canvas today. All right, so of course I set my hair dryer just out of reach, so that was a big stretch, but we're just gonna dry this really quick 
Use your hair dryer set on high and hot. Okay, it doesn't take long to get that paint dry because we've been blending it for a while. Okay, so we are now going to use some mountain forest, just putting out some green colors here on our canvas. So some mountain forest and some bright green. And I'm also going to put out a little bit of chocolate sprinkle, which is a really nice dark brown color. And I'm going to still continue to use the three quarter inch brush. I didn't clean it out. I didn't put it in water. There's no need for that. All right. And we're now going to paint the little uh, ground area at the bottom of our canvas. So I'm going to pick up some of my mountain forest and a little bit of chocolate sprinkle just to brown that color up a little bit because I don't want my greens to be too intense down here at the bottom of the canvas. You can also pick up a little bit of bright green there so it's not quite as dull. And we're going to just begin to paint the ground at the bottom. It does not have to be a completely smooth line. Just tapping this color on. Pat, pat, pat. And dab, 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 just getting some of that color on there pretty easy. I'm also going to put out a little bit of lemon, which is a really great bright yellow color. And we're going to lighten up the right hand side of our canvas just by brush mixing a lighter green with the lemon and this uh, green mixture that we had. And we're going to pat, 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 and dab, dab, dab that on. And you can, if you want to, just pick up some of your uh, mountain forest and a little burnt umber. And we can dab some of this color. We're not really making shrubs or anything like that, but just breaking up this uh, kind of horizontal line a bit, which I think is a little bit nicer than having that too. Um, straight across like it's been freshly mowed. And this is by no means any sort of uh, traditional landscape. This is just kind of a fun and funky little landscape using some bright colors. And now that I've gotten my uh, little uh, ground area uh, established here, we're going to dry that. Okay, now probably the hardest part of the whole painting, we are going to put on our tree trunks and I'm going to use a number 12 flat brush and our chocolate sprinkles. Didn't add any water to the brush, didn't dip the brush in water, We're using the paint right out of the bottle and it's a very, very nice uh, creamy, uh, consistency paint. So I'm going to put a few little trees in here. So here you can see the uh, finished painting. And I'm going to carry a couple of these trees all the way off the top of the canvas. So they start just below uh, the grass line. And I do this by holding my handle straight up toward the ceiling. And we're going to use very little pressure on the brush and we're going to just kind of scratch and draw our trees on and they get to bend a little bit, have some funky little angles to them. And if I want to make my trunk of my little tree bigger, I will go right next to that first line and I'll just do a little bit of scratching right next to it. And we will get uh, some 
automatic highlights here and there. All right, so let me give you a super detailed close-up of that. That light on there is just where I did not cover uh, the sky that I painted in previously. All right, let's do another little tree. Again, don't use much pressure on the brush. Okay, so there's my second little tree on there, and you see they've got these kind of funky little angles on them. I'm going to just turn my canvas around the other way and do another tree. Let's make this trunk here a little bit bigger. Just scratching with the, what's called the chisel edge of the brush. And then we'll put another little tree over here. And this one will give this tree a branch or a split that's kind of starting a little bit lower. All right, so there we've got, and that we've got plenty of trees on here right now. We don't need to overload it. Um, no need to uh, clutter up our little forest here. I'm going to make this one just a little bit bigger. Now, let's add some little branches off of our trees. So once again, I'm going to use the chisel edge of the brush and again with the chocolate sprinkle. Hold the brush with a handle pointed toward the ceiling and we'll put very little pressure on our brush. And you could see that we make a nice little branch like that. Most of the time, people want to use a liner brush to paint uh, branches on their trees and they paint really wavy little lines that end up looking a little bit like a snake or some seaweed or something like that and you don't need to do that just let the branches kind of I hate to say it like this but branch off yuck 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 so draw a little bit of a branch then coming off of that one coming off of that one and your trees will be more realistic this way than if you try to paint really kind of windy little branches all right so i've painted too many branches on my trees but that's um, how i roll sometimes you just get carried away but we have our trunks and we have our branches established and now we are going to begin to put some leaves on our trees and we are going to do that once again with our three-quarter inch flat brush. I'm just going to wipe my brush off here on a shop towel. And again, it's so fun uh, to use these uh, Folk Art Apple Barrel uh, acrylics. They are very rich uh, in color. They have a lot of good covering power. They're not watered down paints that you can't really do anything with. You can use these for all sorts of things. These are the multi-surface formula, so they are good for use on a variety of substrates, whether it's wood, tin, glass, metal, terracotta, glazed ceramic, so many different things that you can paint using the uh, folk art multi-surface paints. All right, so let's add some uh, branches to our tree. I'm gonna take some of the excess paint off of my brush because I don't want too much on there. I'm going to lay the brush down kind of parallel to the surface of my canvas and I'm going to let some of that paint just skim off. You could see I don't have too much paint because it's not covering uh, the branches in solidly. And this is kind of a dark green color because we're going to build our tree from dark green to very light green. One thing I want to caution you against is creating kind of uh, lollipop looking trees. Uh, my trees are going to have some harsh angles to them. We are not trying to make beautifully rounded um, cotton ball or lollipop shaped trees. I'm coming back now. Let me hold this up to the 
camera so we can get a detailed shot of that. So you can see there's plenty of background showing through this. I'm going to pick up some more paint on my brush and I'm going to add a little bit more paint on here and there, stroking more in one spot to give myself a little bit more uh, of an opaque coverage here and there. Not doing it everywhere, but here and there we're going to uh, make this color more opaque simply by stroking more on. Don't want to cover up everything that's underneath. And I think we've got a pretty good coverage of our dark green on there right now. But you can still see some of the tree trunks through there, and you can still see plenty of the sky showing through. All right, before we move on, do we have any questions, Stephen, or anybody got any problems? Uh, no questions, no problems. I think everyone's just enjoying. Okay, great. Then we'll move on. I'll pick up some of my bright green into this uh, mixture of mountain forest and chocolate sprinkle and we'll apply a little bit of this uh, brighter green color. It's not going to be too terribly bright because remember I've not cleaned my brush in water so I just keep picking up the paint that's here on my palette. And we're just stroking this on using our flat surface of our brush held pretty parallel to the surface of the canvas. I think it's helpful if you'll hold your brush at the very back of the handle. That will make you uh, work in a bit more painterly uh, fashion. All right, so now we've got some brighter green colors on here. You can still see through. Haven't covered everything up yet. Now, let's set our... Um, three-quarter inch flat brush down and let's pick up our flexible blade metal palette knife here and we are going to take some mountain forest and a little bit of our chocolate sprinkle that we had out here on the palette just kind of cleaning up a little bit making a dark green color and I'm going to add a little bit of uh, lemon to this brightening it up I like to clean my palette knife off when I go back in to pick up some paint so that I don't really contaminate my puddles of paint. But I want to make a, a brighter green color than what I had here on my painting. Not too bright just yet. We've got, uh, we're going to put this on and then we're going to brighten it up uh, a little bit more. So I'm going to pick up some paint on my brush and I'm going to make a few marks here on the treetops. And this is probably what's going to give more people a bit of a pause than uh, it should because you can't really uh, exactly plan out how this is going to work. All you can do is load up your palette knife without too much paint on it and we're going to swipe this on and we're going to get some interesting little blotchy marks. If you pick up too much paint on your brush, you're going to get a really big blotchy mark that you may not like that much. But again, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. This is kind of fun painting. Uh, once you um, decide that you are actually going to just relax and go with the flow with whatever happens on your canvas, you will really start to enjoy this. If you are the person who thinks you have to control every little thing that happens and make it look some certain way, you're probably going to have a little bit more of a problem with this kind of painting. It is fairly relaxed, fairly casual, but you can see we've got nice um, bright green splotches on our trees. And once again, I'm going to dry this just a little bit using the hair dryer. Okay, I had dried that. It is not completely dry, but at least it's, it's drier than it was because I want my next layer of highlights to show up and be a bit brighter. 
So I'm going to take some of this light green color that we just used and we are going to add more lemon to it, making this color even lighter and brighter. So this is a pretty straightforward painting technique. We're working from the back forward from dark to light. And we're doing the most important thing. We're having some fun while we are doing it. Okay, so I'm going to put on a few of these highlights, not as many as I did of the other color. Set my palette knife down and swipe. Pick up a little bit more paint. And just sweeping these on. I'm actually picking up more lemon on my palette knife. So this is just almost lemon by itself. And I'm going to put in a little bit of a really bright highlight right in there. All right. So that is... Well, I'm looking at it on the monitor, and I was pretty happy with it till I uh, kind of checked it on the monitor there. And I want to put in just a little bit more bright green right up there. It's for some reason, I think that was just needed right there. All right. So I'm pretty happy with that, not pitching a fit about any of that at all. All right. Let's make this down here, our little grassy area, um, a little bit more uh, interesting. So I'm going to use my number 12 flat brush and I'm going to wipe the uh, chocolate sprinkle out of it. No need to clean it in water. I'm just going to wipe that brush off and I'm going to pick up some of my primary blue and I'm just going to work that into my brush. This is just really neutralizing the brush, kind of removing the brown without cleaning it in water because I don't really want to water down my paints at all. They're a great consistency right out of the bottle so we don't need to alter it much at all to do this um, little canvas painting here. All right, so I'm going to wipe that blue out of the brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the primary blue and just a little bit of the summer sky. Just kind of mix those two together here on the palette. So this is kind of like what we did here in the background or the sky area. And I'm going to take this color and I'm going to use the corner of my brush and I'm just going to tap, tap, tap and dab, dab, dab a little bit of this on in two or three spots. And I'm going to wipe my brush off. Let me show you what we did there. So now we've got some like uh, sky color reflected in our little grassy area. And I'm going to pick up a little more of the summer sky. Load my brush with a little bit of that. Doesn't take too much paint on your brush. And we're going to tap, tap, tap and dab, dab, dab that in a couple of areas. All right. So we've got some lighter areas established now. I'm going to now pick up some of my wisteria. And we're going to dab a little bit of that in. And I'm going to shift now to my little palette knife and pick up a little bit of wisteria on my palette knife. And I want to pat most of this off here on my palette. So I'll tap, tap, tap so that I'm picking up just a very small amount of paint. And I'm going to stroke a little bit of that on. Tap, 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 kind of tapping it on my canvas. I'm going to put out a smidgen more of lemon because I used up all that I had here on my palette. And now we are going to pick up a little bit of our wisteria and a little smidge of lemon. This is going to create kind of an odd color because yellow and purple are complementary colors. And if you're not careful, you'll get a, a not too beautiful brown. But if you work this just right, you'll get a nice soft color that you can 
kind of tap in in a couple of places and it will almost look like you've got an odd shade of green going in there. And I think that is just about what we needed to really kind of bring this canvas together. So I'm going to put it up close so that you get a nice detailed shot of what we've done today. Lots of tapping and dabbing and not really worrying too much about um, reality or trying to paint a realistic landscape. I do want to show you that you can come back and you can change anything that you want to at any time. I'm going to pick up some chocolate sprinkle on my number 12 flat brush and I'm going to uh, take this little branch that is coming up here and we're going to come across some of our highlights. Once again, just stand that brush right up, come across, and now we've just created a little bit of a branch that's in front of some of our highlights just to give a bit of dimension to our trees. I can uh, do another little bit of a branch if I want to I don't want to do this in too many places, but you can come in and just make a few little marks to indicate where you've got branches kind of in front and behind your highlights there. And if you want to or you are unhappy with having uh, four little tree trunks, this little tree trunk over here is so tiny it needs a little help. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to give myself one more tree trunk over here. So we'll hold that brush handle up toward the ceiling and use the chisel edge of our brush. We won't put much pressure on the brush and we will come back next to that and scuff a little bit more on. All right, so that gives us now five tree trunks, which um, notice that there is variation in the size and spacing of our tree trunks. They're not all the same size, and they're not all the same distance apart, and they're not all the same thickness. So as much variety as you can put into your painting, that's what we want to do. All right, so I'm going to ask Stephen one more time if anybody has any questions about what we've done or just any uh, kind of questions in general about painting? Uh, no comments, or I mean, sorry, no questions uh, as of right now, but there are some sweet comments here that um, I would like to read to you. Uh, Louise says this is so pretty and she thinks that this would work well with like autumn leaf colors too. Oh, sure. Yeah. You can definitely do this in any color combinations that you want to. Yeah. Um, Paula said that she actually uh, joined in late, but she's going to watch the replay. Uh, Great. Later on. Yeah, somebody else just said they absolutely adore plaid, so that's sweet of them. Yeah, we really like that. So I want to encourage you to uh, look uh, below in the comments, uh, or right below the video, there is a subscribe button. If you hit that, <coughs> excuse me, then you will uh, know when we have um, live streams coming on. Um, <laughs> I've been told that we need to... Uh, Make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you get um, uh, an, a quick notification every time we're going live so that you don't miss any of our great content. Uh, again, all of these paints were in the 16-piece Apple Barrel Multi-Surface Set Promo ABMS1, which is available for you conveniently on Amazon.com. So... Uh, from everybody here at YTL in the Plaid Studios, I want to thank you for joining us today and encourage you to tune in again. So until then, 